Welcome to the Queens County School Board meeting for July the 13th, 2022. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
but we have had uh, already a, a busy summer um, and summer school up and running now. Um, dedicated staff, thank you so much. I mean, from bus drivers to food service to um, our, our teachers getting back in the swing of things that quickly. I can't thank them enough for all their hard work. And especially I want to give a shout out to HR because of their efforts to continue to staff. And we are literally down to a handful of positions and we are much better at position than many of our peers across the state of Maryland. And I'm very proud of that. So thank you for the staff efforts to get summer school up and running and to make sure that we are geared up and ready to go for a new school year. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, next, our separate superintendent. And um, just an introduction, it was, I had a chance to go to different schools with uh, Dr. Stanlins, and we were going around. She knows a lot of people. Um, either she's taught them, worked with them, or something. So uh, you're talking about somebody on the ground running. I was very, very impressed of who she knew and who came up and said, oh, I remember you and saw this, but that was uh, very heartwarming. Just the welcome to Queen Anne's County. Let's see here. Dr. Sprankle, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna put myself up here, see me. Pick up on the wrong. I think. It disappeared. It disappeared. He's finding where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I'd like to say good evening, mm -hmm. um, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive teammates, <laughs> and all of our friends that are sitting behind me. I, I want to recognize you, even though my back's to you. I feel pretty bad that my back's to you, but my name is Marcia Sprinkle. And I am the new, and I'm going to use new, <laughs> assistant superintendent here in Queen Anne's County. I will tell you, it is a pleasure for me to be able to spotlight our school's events for the month of June. So I'm excited about this. So here we go. Let's take a look at our elementary schools first. I want to start with Bayside Elementary School. Bayside Elementary School had a busy month, extremely busy, with the end of the year celebrations, barbecue, field days, spring concerts, and a fifth grade advancement. But their most popular event was the Chuck a Duck activity. Well, let me tell you about this Chuck a Duck activity. At Bayside Elementary School, they have 363 students. And they had staff members, they had their school resource officer, deputy that was there that day, Miss Welch, they were all on the roof. <laughs> Teachers, everybody. The kids were on the ground, there was a small pool. And so each of the ducks were numbered. And they tossed, the adults tossed those ducks, and the ducks that made it inside the pool were the winning ducks. <laughs> and guess what? Those students earned a prize. Ah. So that was an exciting event That's at funny. Bayside Elementary School. Love that. Mm. Our next school to be recognized is Centerville Elementary School. Centerville Elementary School was just happy for their field day because we have to remember this is the first field day for those students. You know, it is wonderful to have our students back outside, mm -hmm. back together with their classmates and friends. It's just so exciting that they can get back outside again. So they were thrilled to pieces to be doing field day outside this year. Next we have Churchill Elementary School. Churchill Elementary School celebrated fourth grade students, the class of 2030, can you imagine that? Mm. Okay, advancing to Sudlersville Middle School. The town manager, Charlie Rose, gave a send-off or special message, and let me tell you, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. <laughs> so they celebrated and they went out in style. So congratulations to our students at Churchville, Churchill Elementary School. Next, Graysonville Elementary School showed off their talents. They put on a talent show. 
I just can I can just remember those talent shows and let me tell you something kids was just showing all of their abilities and they dedicated the talent show to Mr. Jamie Gettings Welch it was a very special time and you can see him pictured there on the screen Graysonville Elementary School also rocked the school with their spring band and choir concert. So you know they were just rocking to the music. So <laughs> congratulations and we want to congratulate our Graysonville Elementary School for sure. Next we have Kennard Elementary School. Kennard Elementary School's fifth grade student council wanted to lead back a contribution to their school, so they painted a trash can. So that was their special gift to the school. Fourth grade enjoyed a walking trip to Millstream Park, which again, we are glad to celebrate the fact that our kids can go outside, enjoy the environment, enjoy our beautiful Queen Anne's County. So we're happy about that. Mrs. Harrison's students made imitation pearl projects as a final culminating art project. So, sounds like Kennard Elementary School had a fun time as well. Next, we have Kent Island Elementary School. Kent Island Elementary School staff sent their students off for summer in a big way by carding them with a big sign that has, have a great summer, <laughs> okay? The second grade took their final class picture as they transition over to Bayside Elementary School in the fall, so that was a wonderful um, activity for them to actually do. And also, students had a blast with field day. You can see them out there sack racing. If you look, take a look at the picture that's there. Over 300 families participated at the end of the year barbecue. It is so nice when we can get our families out. So I'm happy about the fact, we're all happy about the fact that we could not only have our students outside celebrating and have a grand time together, but also our families coming back to the school grounds and celebrating along with the staff and also students. Next, we have Mattapeak Elementary School. Mattapeak Elementary School students enjoyed a yummy Jack Frost snack, another partner on field day. So you can imagine how much fun they had. You can see them pictured there enjoying their snacks, and you can see the send-off that's there right there where the students are walking through a human tunnel. <laughs> so they had lots of fun at Mattapeak Elementary School. Settlersville Elementary School. Students had fun closing out the school year with field trips, field day, and a recreation of some type to highlight New York City with our families engaged. So they had a fun time walking down New York City Lane with the Stock Exchange. Okay. And now our middle schools. Let's see what our middle schools were up to last month. Centerville Middle School. The end of the year activities included field trips, assemblies, field day, and eighth grade career day. Again, we want to celebrate our community partners like Rita's, The Edge, and the Boys and Girls Club because they helped make all these events a huge success. So thank you so much to all of our partners. Mattapeak Middle School. Matter Peak Mental School honored their student um, of the month. So they were honored and they were proud. You can see them pictured there. You can also see pictured there our PFY, which is partnering for youth club. As you can see, they're sitting there enjoying a game of chess. And also we had a call for our eighth grade band concert. Families came out and watched and listened. You can see the families that are sitting there and just so proudly watching their students perform. Stevensville Middle School. Families came out to celebrate the eighth grade advancement. You can see they had a packed house. Thank you so much, custodians, for cleaning up all that confetti. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's a cool picture. Uh -huh. We love our custodians. Sellersville Middle School. 
sixth graders at Settlersville Middle School focus their service projects on solving the problem of nutrient pollution entering the Chesapeake Bay. So you can see they were putting up their signage just there. Um, that school is actually recognized by LEAD, which is the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And this is actually a, an actual organization that's recognized worldwide um, for rating green schools. So we're excited about our school being rated that for sure. And now moving on to the high schools. You can only imagine what you're going to see about our high schools. Look at our graduates. Ken Island High School, something to be proud of. A normal graduation. <laughs> We're all excited about that. Didn't have to make any adjustments this year. We just like the fact that we can see our kids outside, enjoying the fresh air along with their families and celebrating in a normal fashion. Ken Island High School also held this innovation night. Students presented their well-researched projects and also prom, their prom's theme was Las Vegas. And you can see the beautiful decorations that were there. So they spent a lot of time on setting that up. And now, Queen Anne's County High School. Some more of our graduates. They're looking, they're standing loud and proud. You can see that for sure. And here are some more pictures of our graduates. I'd like to congratulate all of our graduates. We wish them the best of luck. It's a big, big world out there, we know. We want them to see it and do whatever that makes them happy and make us proud here in Queen Anne's County. So we are happy. Yeah, thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Our thank spotlights you so for June. Thank you. Okay, next we're moving to uh, public comment. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. The first name on the list is Mr. John Kenty. State your name and your address for the record, sir. Sure enough, Ms. Harper. Thank you. John Canty, 104 Margaret Drive, Stevensville, Maryland. Before I begin, <clears throat> I really don't have prepared remarks tonight. I know you're going into arbitration soon. I can only ask, as a former teacher, certainly as a parent who has a vested interest in public education in the county, that take that time, seize that moment, and let the text of this article speak for itself, because you have the opportunity to keep Queen Anne County public schools at the forefront of public education in the state of Maryland. It's going to be a team effort, I understand that, between the Board of Education and the Teachers Union. But you have an opportunity to make the most of it, please. So again, I think my three minutes is probably going to start here. This is an article from the Dispatch from April 22nd of this year, and it reads, Wacomico's superintendent says that the use of recruitment programs and the adoption of negotiated agreements 
have allowed the school system to maintain an adequate level of staffing despite reports of a growing teacher shortage. Earlier this month, Superintendent Dr. Donna Hanlon presented the Wacomago County Board of Education with an update on recruitment and retention efforts within Wacomago County Public Schools. There's a lot in the media right now about the teacher crisis and the staffing crisis, she said, and I thought it would be helpful to speak to that specifically where Wacomago County is concerned. Hanlon noted that each year, Wacomago County Public Schools loses between 100 and 140 teachers to retirement, transfers, or simply individuals leaving the profession. But despite reports of a growing teacher shortage, she told officials the school system is estimated to have lost only 100 teachers this school year. We feel fortunate we have been able to retain teachers to about the same degree we have in previous years, she said. Hanlon told the board members, however, officials are seeing a shortage in the supply of teachers coming to WCPS from local universities. She said critical shortage areas include special education, mathematics, and elementary education. To that end, Hanlon said the school system is working with local colleges to encourage individuals to join the teaching profession through programs such as dual enrollment. WCPS has also introduced a teacher academy of Maryland. That's been three minutes, just try to wrap it up. Pardon? It's been three minutes, sir. Buzz went off, just try to wrap it up, so we're... I'll be glad to. This is, the okay, second page is very, very minutes. short. Thank you for the opportunity to finish. Just now finish it, wrap it up in about 15 minutes, 15 seconds. I know that 1,300 teachers and roughly 800 support staff and all employees thank you for your commitment as shown by the negotiated agreement as we gave probably the largest cost of living adjustment we've ever given here in Wacomico County, said Human Resources Director Vince Pavic. It's put us in the rare area of being one of the higher paid, not highest, but higher paid on the Eastern Shore. So in closing, I wish all of you the very, very best of luck as you go into working on the next contract. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes. Ms. Janet Pauls. Good evening. Yes. Janet Pauls, 106 Willis Road, Centerville, Maryland. Good evening, President Smith, Superintendent Salins, executive team. My purpose here tonight is to welcome Dr. Sprankle to Queen Anne's County. Uh, as you know, she is experienced. She has a plethora of experiences, knowledgeable, and she is a dedicated employee. And I speak as a former colleague of Dr. Sprangle. Um, so I'm excited that she's here and I wanted to, I guess I am the unofficial welcomer of Queen Anne's County here, <laughs> what it seems like, uh -huh. designating myself to welcome her. Um, you're going to love Queen Anne's County. We have, you're going to be, first of all, be working with a wonderful team. We have great students, teachers, and parents. So we are excited to have you here. And if there's anything that I can do, um, I'm always available. I think the biggest thing that you're really going to like about her is her demeanor. Uh, she is the one colleague that I can honestly say I have never heard anyone have anything negative to say about her. She's a positive spirit and she will bring so much to the team. So I'm excited to have you here. Welcome. And Thank you so she much. Will she will indeed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lynette. Wow. She's Thank capturing you so it. Much. All right. Thank you. Look that way. Look that way. Look yeah, that way. look at, yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Uh, is that the end of our... That is. Anyone else would like to speak for public comment? That is it, Mr. Smith. Hey, could you acknowledge we have a letter? Yes, sir. So uh, the board members received a an email from a student. Um, everyone had a chance to read this. Yes. Since we have open forum now for public comment, we will not be reading this out loud. The letter has been turned over to the superintendent who will be addressing this student's concerns. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smith. 
Okay, that will end uh, public comment. We'll go for informational items. Policy 241. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. For the record, I'm Julie Hickey, coordinator of food services at Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I bring before you tonight the first reading of policy 241 on meal charges and unpaid meal balances. Um, just to give a little background, since 2017, the United States Department of Agriculture has required that any county that operates the national school lunch or breakfast program um, develop and clearly communicate to the community um, what their policy is on meal charges and unpaid meal balances. Um, and these policies ensure that there is a consistent and a transparent approach to how um, unpaid balances, meal charges are handled while we still ensure that students receive the nourishment that they need to stay focused on their school day. Um, the USDA requires that this policy contain certain requirements, but the discretion of all the specifics are left up to the county. Um, and this is not a new policy. This is a revision of a policy to make sure that we have all of the required um, USDA requirements in there and that our criteria is clearly spelled out um, on how we handle these charges. So this affects our, if we, we need this to affect funding to make sure we're compliant with. Yeah, we need to be compliant with the USDA guidelines, yes, for operating the National School Lunch Program and Breakfast Program. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, my only concern is that on here the schedule reads are not correct. And I'm sure that Ms. Dennis would, will get back and get and we'll rephrase that. So, okay, so this is the 13th? This is the first read on the 13th. Mm -hmm. well, so I'll on the 20th that. could be the second read if, uh -huh. if necessary. Okay. And then the third read for approval would be August 3rd. If that's her reads are aligned with the original schedule. Meeting. Yes, just moving it back a date. That's all it was. Correct. Okay. Yes. And that's because we changed our July fourth. Yes, meeting. it's exactly Correct. why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so no change. A, it's just any other board members have any questions? No. No. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> our next, Dr. Spankle, you're up again. Hey. Good evening again, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team members, and all of our guests that are seated behind me. Last month, you may recall that uh, Ms. Hudak brought forth policy 603, personal electronic devices for the board to review. I'm bringing it before you again tonight for your review took into account all of your recommendations that you provided us last <coughs> month, and we incorporated all of the re recommendations that you provided within this policy. We received one comment today, and uh, the comment, the summary of the comment basically talked about the fact that there isn't a grade or age level listed within the policy but that's actually addressed in the regulation. So in the regulations, it is addressed. And so the parent was concerned about that because specifically she, or they indicated that um, the parents do want their elementary children to be able to carry their cell phones in their backpacks, not necessarily use the cell phones within the class because they feel like the laptop will suffice for the elementary. Uh, they didn't have experience or expertise with secondary. That's what they put in the comment. However, they want their kids to be able to carry the cell phone so that when they go home from school, they can call and check in, that kind of thing. So I wanted to be sure that I shared that comment. Thank you. How, I just had one question about the, the purpose where it talks about it's the um, students and the employees. In the regulations, is there any different differentiation between how the employees and the, you know, it seems to group in employees and the students. Are the guidelines the same, whether you're an employee or a student? Do you know if in the guidelines? I don't recall. Okay. Specifically. Okay, thanks. Okay. 
And I, th I think that one thing, you know, because the policy is one thing, the regulations that are guidelines to the policy. Yes. Because I think, like in our schools, the teacher might want all phones down or something when they're doing something. So that's, you know, discretionary there. But uh, I think that's a good point to emphasize regulations in there, too. Right. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kimber. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team. I'm Dr. Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation, and I'm here tonight for the second read of the new Citizen Advisory Committee's policy. Uh, just again, this policy just establishes that we can create um, citizen advisory committees. This isn't a, talking about a specific committee. Um, that was addressed in a regulation we presented last month. There have been no comments um, emailed to us about this. So um, the policy is basically the, the same as was showed during the first read, except we did strike uh, public schools because council told me that wasn't necessary. First one bringing here, so I appreciate that. Happy to address any questions, concerns. Any board members have any questions or? No. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Oh, wait, and the next more. policy. You're still there. I was going to say, but wait, there's more. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I'll go back and come back if you'd like. <laughs> we like you so much, just sit there. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. So. I also bring a first read of the Code of Ethics and Conflict of Interest policy, policy number 104. And if you remember, this policy was just approved at the June meeting. And after we approved it, there was some discussion. We should really probably address um, the terms and, and adding staggered terms to this policy. Mm -hmm. So this was um, the attempt just to make those edits. Uh, the only edits to the policy are in section S. Page seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Page seven. So we have three members correctly now. Yes, sir. So we could appoint one to one year, two years, three years, and then they'd be reappointed once every year. Just Correct. One a year. Um, I also I, I added a, um, well, two lines. The one about that they can serve more than one term because that was something that that you all discussed. Mm -hmm. um, and as well as I added uh, number fourteen, just to kind of clean up the vacancy. There is a line in number thirteen how you all could remove a member of the ethics policy or ethics panel. Excuse me for a variety of reasons. So I thought that we should clarify that if you do have to replace one of those panel members that the replacement will serve out that term. Um, and we'll stay on the same rotation. Right. Correct. Okay. Great. Any other questions by the board members? Uh -huh. Thank you. Thanks. That's good. Now we'll go. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, thanks. Now I think we're going to bypass our break, guys. Good idea. Yes. Human resources. Dr. Noel. Everybody's had a chance to look at this. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the human resource and substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session? Second. A motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Let's have it. Smith. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, members of the executive team. My name, for the record, is Jolene Smith. I am the supervisor of special education for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I bring before you this evening for your approval a contract for, I believe, Gold Book is the first one. <coughs> CompuClaim? Com CompuClaim, sorry. Com yeah. Um, so I bring before you a contract for CompuClaim, which is our medical assistance billing platform. The amount of the contract is uh, $25,000, and this would be funded through our restricted funding sources. Um, CompuClaim is used for our medical assistance billing, as I noted. Um, because it is providing that platform, it allows us to electronically bill for uh, reimbursable services. 
such as therapies, case management, et cetera. Um, and it has significantly improved our ability to not only bill current services, but also kind of retro bill anybody that may become um, eligible for medical assistance billing in past months. So it has been an invaluable tool. They've been responsive to your needs and whatever you feel. They have been. We are still working with them on some integration uh, between our power school system and our Maryland online system. Um, but we are working out some kinks with them on that. But it has been working seamlessly other than a little bit of extra work on our end that we're trying to eliminate. But they're receptive and capable of resolving some of those issues at issue. Yes. Any other board questions? No, sir. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the contract for CompuClaim platform, fiscal uh, dollar impact of $25,000, budget source is the FY23 restricted operating budget. Second. A motion second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye seven, passes. Hey, you're still here. I'm still here. Goldbook. So I also bring before you this evening a contract for Goldbook um, under the category of Enome is their company title. Uh, this is also a unique product that we have used uh, for several years now. It is touted as improving compliance for IEP goal development as well as progress monitoring um, as it affords the opportunity for goals to align to data tracking tools um, and it also allows us to tailor our goals and back map to missing skill gaps. The amount of the contract is for $25,470 and this would come from our budgeted local unrestricted funds. Any questions by board? Entertain a motion. Mr. Smith, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, accept the Goal book contract, fiscal impact of 25470 budget source unrestricted operating budget. Second. Motion second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, President Smith, members of the board, Dr. Salins, and executive team, Carla Poulin. I'm the facilities planner, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. If you recall during the last meeting, I came to speak with you about the educational facility master plan. We outlined what this document is, why it's important to our funding process, and the notable changes that we have for the 2022 submission. So this evening, I'm here to ask your approval to use this document as our guide for fiscal year. 23. I, I've looked at it, of course, this is the, looks like the, not the boilerplate, but a few changes from last year. Uh, does any other board members have any questions or we've been over it? And mm -hmm. Thank you for all the hard work that went mm -hmm. into it with you and everyone who had at hand in putting this book together year after year after year after year. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the Educational Facilities Master Plan for 2022. Second. Motion second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. I am gonna stay here for the next okay. item. So the next thing that we have for you is to ask your approval for a contract for Mr. Alfonso Sorrell, a contractor member of Bay Area Transportation, to purchase a new bus for the 22-23 school year. This is going to replace bus number 5710, and this will be used as a paid spare. There is no fiscal dollar impact directly with this purchase to the county. This is all handled under the existing transportation contract. This is a real quick question. How many paid spares do we keep? Off the top of my head, I can't Mark. tell you. Do you recall? I, I'm thinking four. It's. I'm thinking around it's, four. And, and and that's four that's an each somewhere. LLC. I mean, not each one, but the combined. As, as combined, yes. Okay. So, and they will. They, don't they also interact with each other? If we don't, if we don't have a bus, they will interact with each other to do a spare. Thanks. The only comment I have is disturbing news we heard the other oh. day about electric buses. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, that's not an issue to talk about right now, but no. No. bus drivers and contractors, coming. pay attention. 
Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve Mr. Alfonso Sorrell's purchase uh, for the Bay Area Transportation LLC of a new bus to replace 5710? Second. Motion, second, also there, say aye. Aye. Thank you. The next item for your approval is for Mr. Billy Willis, also of the Bay Area Transportation LLC, one of their contractor members, to purchase a new bus for the 2022-23 school year. This is an existing route, bus number 6408. We had a contractor member retire, and so Mr. Willis is asking to take over this route. Again, no direct impact to the Queen Anne's County budget. This is covered under the transportation contract questions so I would like to um, say congratulations to mrs. Diane Kessinger we had uh, we hosted her retirement dinner she was so surprised and we wish her all the best absolutely love miss Diane mr. Smith may I make a motion to approve mr. Billy Willis of the Bay Area Transportation LSC to purchase a new bus for the school year uh, to replace 6408 Second. A motion second. Also, say aye. 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 Have it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, uh, public comment. Anyone else? And if anybody hasn't signed up, would like to speak or speak again, feel free. Hey, hearing none. Uh, future meetings. Our next work session, because we're a one week off schedule, will be July the 20th at 5 p.m. And our next uh, regular board meeting will be August the 3rd at 6 p.m. Does any members have anything that you'd like to bring up before the end of the meeting? It's 620. Happy summer. Carrie. <laughs> yes, Carrie, can't wait to see you again. Okay. Do you have a motion? The net's not doing well. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those ready say aye. 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 Thank you.